Um, let's get Lisa up. So our next topic for discussion that we are going to be looking at is journaling and the role that they play. So um, Lisa's got a little little presentation um, for you guys to, to take a look at. Uh, so Lisa Dean is a, a Master Gardener and Master Naturalist. Um, she's been a Master Gardener for many years and then just completed this uh, past fall's Master Naturalist training here in, in the unit. So we're happy to have her um, be a, a dual-hatted volunteer as well. Uh, Lisa really enjoys traveling, um, spending time in nature, and then of course sharing her uh, love of learning with others. So um, she's going to take a look at the art of nature journaling and give you guys some ideas on what you can do to um, to, to really connect with, um, with nature. So Lisa, it's all you. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning to everyone. Um, you know, I think most of us have been part storyteller and part journaling all of our lives. It's just a matter of what uh, medium that you're addressing as to whether it's going to be uh, journaling about your home, about your grandkids, about your Got your pets, and with taking the Master Naturalist training this last fall, um, Sarah happened to punch another button of mine to where I could start consciously and collectively providing um, journaling or including journaling in nature. Um, my husband and I live way out in the country. We have just five acres, but we'll be back to woods that has been deeded to the State Conservation Society. And so we have lots of opportunities for nature observations. And now I have a way to include that in my thoughts as I do this Earth Journal. So one very important thing I want you to know beginning, it, this is all about you and there are tons of sources. My favorite one that I have found recently though is listed they're on the title slide. It's an organization called Lily and Thistle. They are listed on Pinterest. Uh, you can Google them and you will find them. It's a guide for absolute beginners. She does watercoloring. Uh, you do not have to be an expert. And I think that's what I like the best. Find my cursor. So what kind of supplies do you need? You really need to keep it simple uh, in your, um, package of things that you got today. You received a journal and actually, to be really truthful, that is the composition book that um, you can buy for 50 cents online or at Walmart when they have them on, um, on sale. Um, I chose to put some pretty papers on it just because I like paper. Uh, where, where can you go? You can go anywhere from your front kitchen window uh, to a hike, driving down the road. I was, just open your eyes and you are there already. And be prepared and embrace the elements. There is, I love this quote, there's no bad weather, there's just inappropriate clothing. So go prepared and you will enjoy. How do I begin? Uh, the one lesson that we had as a master naturalist was to write a personal code of ethics. And I stumbled around with that for six of the seven days before we had our next class. Um, but in there, it gave two keys. What are, what, how do you feel about environmental ethics and what speaks to your heart? If you go with what speaks to your heart, what sings to your soul, then you are three quarters of the way there. For me, as I said, I stumbled around for most of the week and we're driving down the road and my husband, I'm sharing this with my husband. He says, what's your problem? He said, for years you have had a theme word that you have tried to use in being aware of your surroundings, being aware of the events and the places and the people you meet. Why don't you start there? So on the right hand side, you see a list of what I have had as my theme word my life theme word for the last seven years. Um, number 2016 with, I don't wanna do anything to people. I don't wanna do anything for people. I wanna do things with people. Uh, grateful, start each day with a grateful heart. Be kind, 2020, if we didn't learn anything else during the pandemic, we should have learned how important kindness is 
in our world, not just to each other, but to ourselves also. And this year, it is time. I want to have enough time to be able to do the things that are meaningful to me and to do them correctly. So two weeks of ideas. These are not mine. These are from Lillian Thistle. I'm not going to read them, but just point out a couple of them. And these are not things that you should have to do all at one time. To me, if I take one of these ideas for each of these days that we're going to talk about and, and do, do that first, then I've got almost a year's worth of ideas and questions or thoughts that I can expand with what's happening at that point in that week or that day for me. So again, the next to last one is talking about uh, writing down how you feel or what you are thankful for. It's hard to be unhappy. It's hard to be depressed. It's hard to be down if you think of three things that you are thankful for each and every day. And these do not have to be big things. It could be simple as I got out of bed all by myself today, which if you have orthopedic issues, that's a big one. The last one, this does not have to be perfect. It just has to be you. One of the most precious things I have in my life are the farm journals, again, printed, uh, written in these composition books from my great grandparents when they were on the farm. And many of the entries say, January 11th of 1942, Bessie had two calves today, we named them Henry and Mo. Um, we took 15 eggs to town and got 12 cents for them. So to me, that is precious. That was their daily life. So it just has to be you. Never be ashamed of your own handwriting. I do a combination of, um, computer generated notes along with my handwriting, but who sees you, your journal is going to want to see you. And that includes your handwriting, whether your good handwriting shows up or your bad one that day. Day two, change your brain. Um, you get to choose which things are most important to you. I think that's one of the most lovely things about this is you choose what means something to you. <clears throat> And there is nothing wrong with draw, with tracing. If you want to draw something, a stick figure is fine. If you want to trace, you have a thousand different sources. And a very good one, again, is Lillian Thistle. This is not an art project. You can include drawings. You can include uh, magazine cutouts. You can include photographs. You can just do a narration. Mine are a combination of all of the above. The other thing is don't get stuck on perfection. If you have to have a scratch through, you have to have a scratch through. You might could make that a flower. Day four, what we see is what we expect to see. If your eyes are attuned to what is going on, then you will be able to see the those things that are important. My husband and I were going into town on our favorite country road the other night, and it was right at dusk. And there is a certain spot that we will always see deer. And so I had intuitively slowed down a little bit, put my brights on because I could, and he's pointing off to the left and he says, oh, there's two deer over there. And I looked off to the right and I said, there's four more over there. So the power of observation, what you get used to, what you expect is very key for how you can do that. And share with somebody else, even if it's just tapping your husband's chest on the on, in the car and saying, well, you missed those four over there looking at those two over there. You don't have to say it that way. The power of I wonder. Always have that childlike excitement and anticipation of what is next. And, and don't, don't look for all the answers to the questions all, all the time. Sometimes you're going to get a couple of them and the others will be answered later on. Make simple notes. Uh, I, I can't stress the importance of just jotting down. I'm I'm a list maker and I'm famous for my bullet list. That's all I need is one or two words to remind me when I want to go back and have the time, take the time to do more than what I have at that point. Day number six, that reminds me of, it looks like. Um, one of our neighbors has a slice of a, a tree trunk that's sitting up on his porch. The tree obviously had grown very differently, but this cross slice 
is shaped like a heart when he cut it out and 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 that's displayed on their porch um, make connections between current knowledge and new discoveries um, boy have i been doing that since last fall and i will share something with you along that use all of your senses sometimes the smell of the pig farm is going to precede you going down the road and seeing the pig farm not that that's particularly good uh, example, but you get the draft. Humility and clarity. Just be amazed all the time of the of the beauty and the majesty of this earth that we live on. Um, there's there's a miracle in in all of life, and it allow you to see things differently. Again, become a child once again. Be surprised. How much fun it is when you're surprised. Um, <laughs> at one point in time, I was doing porch planters for a local company and I had gone up to this porch of where this pot was and it was fairly protected and it was full of leaves. This huge pot was full of leaves. And I thought, well, this is weird. I've never seen this before. So I bent over and bent down with my gloved hands and up jumped a squirrel. He had made that his winter home. And he hit my chest and I jumped back and of course I screamed a little bit and he fell to the ground and shook his head off and looked at me and ran off. Be surprised. I wouldn't expect that, but then I, you know, when I got back to the office and I was teased about harassing the wildlife. Day number nine, three languages, use all of them. They're all important words, numbers, how big that bird was. I'm, I'm surprised uh, in doing the bird feeder project this last winter that the size of the bird is very important. And, and it's only a matter of an inch or two sometimes that makes the difference between one subspecies and another one. And pictures. Again, you can use any kind of medium. It can be your own. It can be your child's picture. It could be a clipping out of a magazine. I'm famous for leaving pages out of, out of magazines. I've got to where I just make a copy of them now because somebody will come behind me that I gave that magazine to and they go, well, where's that article? So I try to give them the whole picture from now on. <laughs> Uh, sacrificial pancakes. Know that it's not always going to be perfect. You know, if you're cooking a whole bunch of pancakes at an, at an event, the first pan's probably not going to be the prettiest. And so expect that there's going to be some oopsies, there's going to be some cross outs, there's going to be some retakes, and that's okay. Um, I think that messy journal entries or writings are some of the most heartfelt and true to our heart because they can see the intensity with which we were working at that point. Find your flow. Um, there is a wonderful TED talk. I gave you the name of it. You might want to look up on your own, but it talks about how to create and keep happiness in your life. And when you have happiness, when you are focused and concentrated, when you are in your element, then that is what is going to lead to the most attention and fulfillment of your creativity that you can have. Again, bullet list, simple drawings. Flow triggers your focus of your attention uh, to observe the world. I think one of my most fun things is starting to get involved with some of the nature hikes, um, being more aware of my surroundings, watching where I'm placing my feet very carefully, um, staying on the path, looking off the path. Those are all very important. And get your kids into nature. You're not going to find any more, any greater exuberance or any more fun or excitement than to have children involved with you. Uh, as Anne even shared with the terrariums, kids love to do. They like to have their hands involved and let them ask you questions and see what the answers are going to be. That's, that in itself is creativity. Make it sound like a game. Make this fun. Do it with your eyes closed. Do it with your ears closed. Um, 
just try to concentrate on your different senses to see what may be coming around. Um, we have in this pandemic time working with the elderly who are um, assigned to senior centers and, and they can't get out. We've constructed some games that they can do in their apartments, a little bit of a scavenger hunt of things that they can do, an activity for them where they can be with others doing the same thing, but still maintain that uh, distance that's needed. So close your eyes and, and listen to the sounds that you have. Look for a particular color. Look for three different shades of that color. Um, so um, that's exactly what, what we need to do to be more aware of our surroundings. And then become a detective. Find something that you think is interesting and share it around. Um, we have a wonderful opportunity as master gardeners and naturalists to get together once a month and just do some sharing time. We have um, updates on, on Elizabeth's garden and, and other pictures and so forth. And Sarah always challenges us just as she has done today with one of those pointed questions of what do you think about this? What are you doing here? So the most important thing is to have fun. This is not something to be perfect. It's something to be intensely personal, but also to be shared. This is a montage um, of things that I have in my new nature journal. Again, I have a variety of, of um, things that I have done in the past. The upper left hand, picture of the little blue bird. That's my husband's hand. And at the end of that last big, Nancy, nasty, long, freezing, snow-covered uh, week that we had in February, he brought this little bird in. He found her on the ground beside a bluebird house that we had. She was still, um, she was pretty still, but she was still alive. Her little head would move, her eyes would blink but she was obviously very cold. And being the tender heart he is, he brought her in and we tried to warm her up. Unfortunately, she was just too cold for too long and she did die. Uh, about two weeks later, when it was much warmer, things were starting to pop and, and hop around. Uh, Glenn went back to check the, bird, the bluebird house and he found the maid had also frozen in that intense cold. Just a little bit too early for for um, them to be able to survive and a little bit too intense. But what a special feeling it made, it gave to me to know that my husband cared enough about even the least of these. Second picture in um, goes along with my word heart for that year. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. If you are not in a good place, then you know how to get yourself back to where you want to be and you know what you need to do. Connecting with nature is one of the easiest ways to be, to return to that guarding of your heart and to know where you're going and where you're coming from. Third picture over. We have lived in this, on this property since 1997. And our house faces north. It's a big rectangle. So the, the long side is the north side. The short side is the east and west side. On the west side, our property is split by a gravel road. Uh, and on the other side of that is where we have a stand of hickory trees and burr oaks. At the base of one of the hickory trees, directly across from our um, garage and from our um, from our garage, he found this hole had been dug in at the base of the hickory tree. And it was obviously a nest, an in-ground nest for pollinators. Uh, there weren't very many left at that point. It was some wild critter that dug it up. It was about probably eight inches in diameter when he found it in the morning. It had been dug up at night. If you looked below the cap, he had the cap in his hand that whatever critter had just set it to the side and they had um, had a feast on most of the pollinators. We really couldn't tell exactly what they were, probably a wasp. It might've been a yellow jacket uh, nest because they too dig in the ground. 
what was amazing to us is that here was this thing so close to our house that gets mowed regularly that we tromp over taking the dogs out for their walks and everything and we never knew it was there um the next morning he put the cap back on and the next morning we went out there and all of the comb was gone whatever had dug it up came back and finished the job the next night and the cavity was the size of a bowling ball and there was nothing left in there at that point all of the comb all of the sleepy critters were totally gone first time ever in 28 years I love the, the quote on the far right at the top. At the end of the day, your feet should be dirty, your hair should be messy, and your eyes should be sparkling. The picture on the lower left, <clears throat> I have a whole scrapbook about this. Um, I've always had Shelties, Shetland Sheepdogs in my life, and um, this was taken in the fall and spring of um, 2005-2006. We had this little Arctic colored fox that came to our lake neighborhood and he thought that my Shelties were just the most divine thing. Now, we had two. One was an older male, he was, Sully was 14 and Shiloh who is pictured here was seven. But Foxy obviously was a male and he thought Shiloh was so cute. And so he would come every morning when he heard the Shelties greet the world and want to play. And he would run and carry on with both of them until Sully, who was older, just dropped down and, and let him. And then he had the opportunity to go play with Shiloh. Uh, one morning, I stood on the garage apron and took 39 pictures of these two critters, maybe 20 feet away from me, just running and romping from the mailbox to this is a large Missouri poplar to the side of our garage, even nose to nose. They would they would tumble and and it was just a special time. News of that got into town. And one morning we had a visit from the conservation agent. My husband was down the lane with our closest neighbor and the Shelties and the Fox were there along with, with Virgil's cats and so forth. And the conservation stop, agent stopped and, and Glenn goes, oh no, this is all over now. So he went up to the agent and he said, I, I you know, I'm, I'm afraid you're going to say that my dogs are harassing the wildlife. And the agent took a look around and he said, well, actually, I don't see that the fox is being intimidated or restricted at all. He says, it looks like the fox is, is harassing your dogs. And he said, I just heard about this in town. I had to come see for myself. This went on for six months from October of 05 to April of 06. Um, I choose to believe that Foxy found a foxy lady and they went off and had babies and lived happily ever after. Don't know, but that's my version in my journaling. So, well, this is the end of the presentation for today. I hope that you will take this to heart, that you will find encouragement and some ideas. Uh, now it's your job and it's now is your beginning. Uh, we may have some follow-ons in the future where we can share a little bit or maybe even have a part two. But I think and I hope that I have planted some ideas and seeds today that will help you go on your journey of nature journaling. Thank you so much for your time this morning.